Hi, this is Todd Jordan, PTR certified tennis professional and also 5-0 competitive 45 and over player in the Pacific Northwest. Today I'm going to be going over the two-handed topspin backhand. We're going to start from the ground all the way up, going over the stance, the grip, the swing path, and the follow-through. So, to start, we want to talk about the stance. The first thing you want to know about the stance is that we're going to load with our back leg. We don't want to be crossing over with our right leg like this. We're going to get jammed where we can't get our left side to come around. So we always want to start with our back leg first. As I'm running for this ball, I'm going to load off this left leg, and I have two options. I can play at open stance, which you see a lot of the pros doing these days because of the pace of play, and there's just not time to get into the into the court with your right leg. But for us who probably aren't playing professional players, we want to load up here and then we want to step in with our right leg. The next thing we want to do is we want to get low and stay down low through the shot. As I'm down low here, I'm wide, my legs are bent, and I'm going to be staying low throughout the shot. That's the key to getting balanced and having a good, a good contact plane. The next step we want to talk about is the grip. For the backhand, we don't want to close the face like we do on the forehand. We want to keep the racket pretty much continental. We can take our left hand and turn it slightly over to an eastern backhand grip, but we don't want to be going all the way closed like this. If you're closing the face like that, you're going to be hitting the ball short. The face is closed. It's hard to drive through the ball. It's just a different swing than the forehand, whereas in the forehand you can close the face but still get a lot of power because there's a lot more extension and reach with the one-hander. So. Now that we have that eastern grip, as I'm stepping in and staying low, the next key is your swing path. We don't want to just bring the racket straight back, so we don't bring the racket all the way back and run to the ball like this. If I do that, I'm not going to get any racket acceleration. So that's why you hear pros talking about the unit turn. We, as we do a unit turn, my racket stays right in front of me. I'm tracking the ball, I'm stepping in low, and now I start my swing from here. From here, I can get the racket back, down, and through in one continuous motion. That's how you get racket acceleration, pace, and depth on your shot. The other thing you want to think about is getting under the ball. So as I do my unit turn and I initiate this swing, I want to drop under the ball. You can see my right wrist is bowed. That's how I get the tip of the racket below my hands and it allows me to come up low to high hitting topspin on the ball. I've got two shots I want to learn. I want to hit a high deep cross court ball and I also want to hit that low short cross court dipping ball when a player comes to the net. The difference is in the swing path. For the long deep shot I want to go through all the way through contact and I want to lift up high hitting that ball three or four feet over the net. If I want to dip the ball short I'm not going to extend through as far. I'm going to make contact and I'm going to come up and over and maybe finish a little bit lower, keeping the ball down and short right at the player's feet. The next step is the follow through. The follow through is going to be over my shoulder on all these. If I want to go down the line, I'm just going to catch it a little bit later, pointing my strings down the line, but I'm finishing over my shoulder. My elbows are up, my toes are forward. For the cross court ball, I'm going to catch that shot a little more out in front extending out and finishing with the elbows up and my body facing forward. I've initiated that unit turn with my legs and I'm throwing my body at my target. The last thing you want to think about is your feet. You have two options on the finish. You can do your normal step in and just hold your finish here where you're balanced or you can throw the left side around. I see a lot of players using that method. Uh, Novak Djokovic uses this shot a lot where he comes in, steps in, and he just pushes up and throws his left side around, getting his shoulders pointed at his target. That's a great way to get more power on the stroke. The biggest mistake that I see club players doing when I'm teaching them the two-handed backhand is that they have their arms too close to their body and their right arm is bent. When your right arm is bent and your arms are in like this, the racket head is down and there's no way to initiate that circular loop accelerated swing. So when I'm in ready position waiting for a ball, I should be in my forehand grip. But when I switch over to my backhand grip, I want to straighten my right arm out all the way so the racket head is pointed up. From here, I do my unit turn and I can really accelerate with that circular motion. Anytime that right arm is bent, the racket is naturally going to drop and I'm going to have more of a straight back, straight through swing, which is less acceleration and not enough topspin because you can't get under the ball. The second mistake I see players use, doing 
is crossing over with this right leg. When they reach out for that wide ball, they'll cross over and try to hit a topspin backhand, but their left hip is stuck back behind their right side, and they can't get through. The easy solution to that is to learn how to hit a good slice. Whenever I have to cross over that right leg, boom, I'm going to use my slice where I don't need to bring my body through. I can stay sideways and still hit a really good deep shot. You'll see Federer using this shot a lot. You see a lot of the men using that slice more, but on the women's tour, I'm seeing a lot less slicing and they get stuck out here where they can't accelerate and get any power because their left hip is stuck behind their body. So when you get pulled wide and you can't load off that back leg and step in, when you do have to cross over, remember that's the perfect time to use your slice. Practice that shot. Get out there wide, set up like this with your left hand up here and throw that slice in cross court. You've got to learn to take that ball cross court so that you can recover to this position here which is just left of center. You don't want to be taking that ball down the line because the ready position is too far away. So having a good slice is key. But when you can set up, load off that left leg, go forward and throw that left side into the shot for a strong two-handed topspin backhand. Hopefully all those ideas will make your topspin backhand much better in the future. And remember what I learned from Craig O'Shaughnessy, your backhand is your shield, it is not your sword. The forehand is the sword, the forehand is the shot you want to be attacking with. So when you are hit deep into the backhand corner, you want to be able to defend, keep that ball cross court, keep it in play, and wait for the forehand to be your aggressive shot with. If you've liked the ideas I've shared here today with the two-handed backhand, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to our channel to get future episodes, and also head over to TennisBeyond.com to join up for one of our future tennis camps around the country. Thank <laughs> you.